From 1872, Edward Mybridge was set down the future technologies and the framework for biomechanics and kinesiological research. But what is biomechanics and kinesiology? We got samurai. We've got biomechanics to learn. Hello, welcome back to Immersive Sports Science. Content not commentary, sports science, not bro science. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about what is biomechanics and kinesiology. Now guys, if you could smash subscribe, hit that bell, let's get in the video. So what is the difference between biomechanics and kinesiology? Even though we lump them together, they are two separate fields of study. Although both can be used in an exercise science, so everyday life, and the other one can be used in a more sports science and a less medical field of study, they've impacted everything from preventing you trip over at Tesco's with your trolley to helping astronauts work better in space. Kinesiology is the study of human movement and biomechanics is the study of how forces and stress affect the human body, but also objects, in this case a sporting sense. Kinesiology asks the reasons why we move and for what reason. Biomechanics, as the name probably suggests, bio being biology and mechanics being related to physics, helps to us to understand the theory of movement and help us understand movement through the use of mechanics on human movement, but also on the movement of sporting objects, such as your javelin or your discus, or even a relay baton. You heard that right? It's physics related to sport. Who thought those two things could be combined? Now, it must be noted that those two terms are nuanced and often used interlinked, regardless of the fact that they are both separate fields of study. Now, because they're both interlinked, there are certain areas that cross over, and the terms are often used interchangeably. Likewise, I predict in the future that biomechanics and kinesiology will in fact become almost one field of study and the areas that differentiate them will be not really that noticeable. Now we mustn't confuse biomechanics and kinesiology with biohacking. For starters, biomechanics is an actual science and biohacking belongs in the pseudo-science science fiction world of cyberpunk. Hey, I'm a cyborg. Like with all fields of study within the sport exercise science, you have your psychological, your physiological and anatomical, and also your biomechanics and kinesiology. And there's a kind of an intermix in the middle in some other fields that may interlink with them. That is the basis definition of what sports science is. Likewise, in kinesiology, we can further break this down into the kinesiological triad, that being your emotional, chemical, and physical elements of your human movement and motion. Although kinesiology is highly quantitative, it's more qualitative than biomechanics. Yet again, as they both intermix, you get some kind of overlapping of the two. Biomechanics is also heavily quantitative, meaning it focuses upon more objective data, data relating to numbers. Nonetheless, due to it being overlapping with kinesiology, this means you can have some kind of psychological element implemented within biomechanical research. In biomechanics, we also heavily rely upon Newton's free laws of physics. Isaac Newton laid the foundation of modern dynamics. Particularly important to the future of kinesiology was his formation of the free laws of rest and movement, which expressed the relationship between forces interaction and their effects. Newton's free laws are sufficient to help us understand our movement and the movement of the sporting objects we use or everyday objects we use within our own atmosphere. In biomechanics, we really like labels. So we've labeled pretty much every form of measure you can have in groups because naturally, why not? In biomechanics, our measures fall in between either a scalar or a vector. What does that mean? Well, scalar has size, you do say. Whereas a vector is a measure that focuses not only on size, but also on direction. So a vector could be displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, weight, whereas a scalar, it's mass, distance, speed. In biomechanics and kinesiology, we have two scientific philosophies of study, of, well, well, looking at our measures, pretty much. That being kinetics and kinematics. Kinematics is looking at motion without reference to mass or force. 
Kinetics is the branch of biomechanics that focuses on force and to understand why we move or why that object moves the way it does. Now motion can happen in a number of ways, in a number of directions and paths. You've either got your linear, which is pretty much as the name suggests, in a straight line. You've also got angular, as the name suggests, means going round bend or rotating. Do not confuse that with rotation of the joints, they're slightly different. And also you've got this thing called semi-linear, which is basically running round a bend. Think of your athletic strap with a sprinter or a runner running round that bend on an oval. In other words, a fancy name for a curved straight line. Biomechanical analysis has become highly important, not just in biomechanics, but across other fields of study and, and in the real world, in terms of sport, regarding strength and conditioning. If you can make your athletes perform better, if you can find the reason why they aren't running as fast, you can make that team perform better. It's heavily linked towards training and the physical ability physical performance of your athletes. And the utilization of computers is heavily now linked in with modern day biomechanics. I'm gonna so gonna take these off because I can't really see them and that. The utilization of technology has been an integral part of biomechanics for a very long time, as it enables us to help to understand the movement in ways that we would probably not normally be able to do with the human eye. They can really be categorized as part of two forms of technology those that help to understand forces and those who help to understand angles. Motion capture, baby. Johnny Silverhand. One significant development taken from the game industry is the use of motion capture in a way of helping us understand every single part of the body and its angles. Likewise, biomechanists and kinesiologists have gone back into these industries to help them improve their motion. We're talking about the utilization of computer game technology, which is another field of area that biomechanics can actually improve, improving the human movement and motion of those characters within game. The first person to really look at how movement happens and how gait happens was Edward Mybridge when he started to take his photographs of horses to analyse their gait patterns. Before the advent of photography and videography, the understanding of kinesiology could only be done through the examination of autopsies of cadavers and also the observational analysis of movement in real time. Edward Mybridge's work helped to inspire others like Etienne Jules Nere to not just to capture horses and human motion, but to try and understand the mechanics of motion. This transposed over into sport. During the 1900 Olympic Games, biomechanists were allowed to analyze human motion and analyze the athletes while competing. One of the more interesting findings from Murray's analysis was the comparison of this winning hurdle action to the method of the Frenchman, Mr. Potier. In this example, the photographic image taken using chronophotography was drawn onto a single image, clearly showing the progression of the technique. So it is Alvin taking the hurdle with a straight front leg, similar to modern hurdlers, compared to the Frenchman below who tackles the hurdle quite high. Although we advanced the technology for biomechanics, many of the techniques that they mastered in this era are still used to this day. But nonetheless, even though that's cool, from our point of view as kinesiologists and biomechanists, we want to know why people move the way they do. So breaking them down into their anatomical parts, so to speak, can help us understand that movement, can help us understand that particular motion, but also understand why it can cause injury to a potential athlete. So, say, for instance, gymnastics. If by landing straight leg, does that increase the chance of injury? Yeah, probably. And if we look at studies that, for instance, done by Loughborough, Ewick and Birmingham University on behalf of the Russian gymnastics team, they found out that by having your legs wider, you spin faster and quicker. This was in the early 90s. And sometimes we can look at such a tiny thing of what we can potentially want to improve. Thusly, it can be argued, the greater the technology improves by, the greater our understanding of biomechanics and kinesiology. Nonetheless, we can't take away from the fact it takes a human to interpret that data 
look at that data and also understand the data relatively to that particular context and situation. 